Guys, this video is sponsored by Premier Fight Picks. Bardia Helmi is a top MMA handicapper with a 70% winning public record tracked over two and a half years. Bardia doesn't just pick his favorite fights either. His record includes many big-time underdogs like Jan Blahovich over Dominic Reyes or Derek Brunson to beat Shabazian, just of recent memory. If you like to bet on fights and are looking for a little help picking the winners, visit PremierFightPicks.com to subscribe. With Adesanya fighting this weekend on a loaded card, it is a perfect time to sign up. Bardia is offering a weekly special subscription for only $49.99, which gets you all his picks for the Adesanya versus Blahovich card this Saturday. There are currently five bets posted for this event with a couple more coming. He's anticipating a big night, so don't miss out. Follow Bardia on Instagram at Premier Fight Picks and on Twitter at PFP Handicapping. My final prediction for Adesanya versus Blahovich, I'm going Adesanya. Guys, I just think that speed matters. I'm very confident in who the better fighter is in terms of who can do more and who is more dynamic. I don't, as a principle, believe that that makes you more effective or going to make you the victor. Look, quick story, guys. Share this with you before, but let me remind you, when I first came up, I came through Team Quest. Team Quest was owned by Dan Henderson and Randy Couture. And before it was called Team Quest, it was called Performance Quest. And it was an actual physical location. It was a beautiful family gym. Like a small, you know, think of a 24-hour fitness except Ma and Pa owned. And Ma and Pa were named Dan and Randy. So they turned the ballet, the aerobics room, they matted that out, hung up a couple of heavy bags, and that's what was Performance Quest, went on to be Team Quest. And there was only like five or six of us. So that was plenty of room. But those five or six guys were e either fighting in Pride, fighting in the UFC, fighting in Abu Dhabi, or representing the country at the Olympic trials. So it was four or five pretty rough guys, but there was no belt system. And I remember Randy Couture explaining this, and he was saying, Our, we are on a quest for performance, meaning do you win or do you not? I don't care who's got a black belt. I don't care who's mastered Taekwondo and Aikido. I want to know if you and you go mac match up a mano a mano, who's going to win? I just That's all I want to know. As simple of an idea as that sounds to you right now, that was a very foreign phenomenon at the time. I mean, the Bruce Lee and the Chuck Norris, which was bowed to you and my father says, and all this honor that we knew of martial arts, we only knew from Hollywood. There was no actual martial arts. So this was a big deal when you couldn't get two karate guys, uh, you couldn't get a karate guy and a Taekwondo guy to train together. It, it would be blasphemy. You just, you couldn't get a judo guy to go get rounds with a boxing guy. Just when it happened, you picked your own. So Randy Couture really was ahead of things when he said, the only quest I, I want to know about and the only result I want to know is who can beat who. However you're going to get that done within the rule set you're fighting under, fine with me. But I still want to know who can beat who. Now, the reason I bring that to you is just because I am saying that with my eyes, Adesanya can do more and is flashier and trickier and can keep you guessing and can hurt you in more ways with more weapons. I'm right about that, but I, I'm not the guy that then argues that that's who's going to win. I also grew up through the Mike Tyson era, where having a hook with one hand and an uppercut with the other, letting everybody in the world know three months ahead of time, these are the only weapons you're going to use, and going out there and putting down man after man showed you that it's really about the performance, right? Not how much do you know, but when I do watch Adesanya, look, I think that I think that Adesanya is going to bring a lot of problems to the light heavyweight division, particularly with speed. And this is an experiment, right? This is going to be an experiment where a guy in Adesanya's case who has about 12 pounds he can gain walks around, wakes up about 193. He can go all the way up to 205. He can gain this weight, but has elected openly not to. That part's the experiment. He has openly elected to go fight another guy 
at the end of the night under the unified rules for up to 25 minutes. Oh, and by the way, the other guy just happens to be a bigger guy. Anybody else through history or even logically thinking would try to get as close to that 205 pounds as they can. I'm very in for that experiment because guys, we do know it is not a size advantage. It's called a size advantage, but throughout time, it has always been a size disadvantage. The hardest guy to wrestle was from one weight class below you. The hardest guy to box is one weight class below you. The hardest guy to fight is one weight class below you. That size isn't enough for the tipping point to take place. It is just enough to make sure as a built-in feature that he's a little bit faster than you. Nothing you could do about it. He's going to be a little bit faster because he's 12 pounds less. He can also hop around on his feet and go a little bit closer to the 25 minutes, still feeling great than you can, meaning his conditioning is just going to stretch a little bit longer. But those are just built-in pieces of logic. Now, of course, you could come back and go, yes, but the power, well, the power was Blahovich anyway. It wouldn't matter if Adesanya gained that weight or not. And they call him the Polish hammer for good reason. If he hits you, it's going to hurt you badly. And Blahovich only needs to land one punch, and he's got 25 minutes to do it. So I think it's a big gamble on my part to pick Adesanya. I do. I think that's a very big gamble. Knowing that Blahovich only has to hit him once, I think that Adesanya is so tricky that he will frustrate. Blahovich. When you get frustrated in a fight, that's when you start doing things and taking shots and swinging for the fences when it's not there. When you start doing what we call throwing air balls. You don't do that until you're frustrated. Until the guy's already tricked you two or three times, need you in the ribs, and shut one of your eyes. Now you're frustrated. Now you're pissed off, and now you just start swinging, which is exactly what the guy that hurt you in the first place is waiting for you to do. That's where you can start to get picked apart. And we really saw that on good display just in Adesanya's last fight. But when Adesanya started to frustrate Paulo Costa, that's when things unraveled very quickly. So I think that you're going to have something very special here. Because I do think you're going to have a stand-up fight where Adesanya is going to play one game, which is get to the target as often as I can, as quickly as I can. That's a rare game. Most guys will do those same ingredients, except they're going to add get there as hard as I can. I don't think Adesanya's thinking hard at all. I don't think he's thinking power at all. I think he's thinking I need to touch this guy and I need to touch him as often as I can and then get out of the way so that he doesn't touch me. If I'm right, and that is what Adesanya plans to do, and moreover, Adesanya can go out and execute, he's going to frustrate Blahovich. Many people are very light on the idea. Adesanya's the favorite right now, but many people are very light on the idea that he can knock out Blahovich. I agree with you to put Blahovich asleep or unconscious is unlikely. But to get a TKO where you've hit him so many times and frustrated and got him to the point of the exhaustion that he can no longer continue is very, very realistic within 25 minutes. Now, I don't have to go that far in my prediction by way of TKO, by way of decision. I don't have to go that far, and therefore I'm not. But I will give you in my final analysis, Israel, Israel Adesanya will be the light heavyweight champion of the world.